I'm not sure. Have you seen the Gucci show? Yeah, I looked at it. I haven't read the show now, sorry. Yeah, it, they don't really have a show. It was more like... um. So with Gucci, it was kind of like an installation, which is why I feel like me talking about this will be very fast because there wasn't really much to it apart from the fact it was a, an installation. They were celebrating 70 years of the horse bit loafer. Obviously, something that was made by Aldo Gucci in 1953. Um, and this was, I think it was on the first day of Milan Fashion Week that they had this like really big installation. So what they had was, you know, kind of like different artists and they got different artists to kind of transform and play on the horse bit and the horse bit loafer and create like custom spaces. Um, so if you go through their Instagram, you can see and there's like different artists talking about like what they've done with sort of like for the Gucci installation, like with the spaces and stuff. Um, there are also like a lot of old references to old horse bits, a lot of like Tom Ford references as always. Um, even like a Tom Ford heel, I think in this room was a red heel was hanging. Yeah, that one was hanging from the ceiling. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a cool installation, but I, I feel like I wanted to use this time to kind of talk about the direction of Gucci and where Gucci is going now. Ask, yeah, I was about to say, what do you think? Of yeah, this? that's that's more what I wanted to talk about because this collection was really like, just like ultra commercial, wasn't really too much to it. Um, so ever since Alexander McKellar left, obviously I've been following what's been going on with Gucci very closely. And the reason why he left is now very clear that it was financial reasons um, because I was reading an article in the Financial Times not too long ago where... Francois Pinot literally invited one of his close friends to be the head executive at Gucci to kind of switch it up because, like, nothing was working. When someone like Francois Pinot is literally like, I'm going to get one of my personal people who is his thing to, like, fix the business, you know things are going wrong. So that's going on. And even the collection since you know, Alessandro Michele, like the collection since have been so weird. Like mm -hmm. no identity. They've just been like throwing everything at the pan. Like their streetwear looks, there's tailoring looks. What I find weird look. about these luxury houses as well is like, I mean, I haven't looked at the Gucci financials to be fair, but like, it'll be something like when they say, oh, it's not going well. The brand it just, like, yeah. by like 5%. But yeah, 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 yeah. Twenty five percent. They, they were growing financially, just not at the just rate not as much that, as they want, and that's enough to yeah. like drop someone. It's quite yeah. interesting because especially they're, they're, they're kind of, of unrealistic in a way, though, because obviously when Alessandro Michele came, let's say the brand might have been growing 10, 15, 20 plus percent year on year, but maybe it just gets to a point where when you exhaust the customer base, maybe it's not I, because well, I think well, I think there has to be a point like that, but then other luxury houses are operating as if that point doesn't exist. I mean, if you look mm. at like LV, they just grow and 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 it's just not stopping. So I guess when yeah. all your like, peers and competitors are still are growing a lot faster than you, maybe that makes you a failure, even though you're doing numbers that like other businesses would dream of. And I think it comes down to also the benchmark being other brands. So yeah. these brands are comparing their financials to other brands' financials, which is why to them, a 5% increase might be a failure, where to me, I'm like, bruh, <laughs> like, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and it's, these are already brands that are pulling in, like, billions a year. It's not like, oh, we were doing 100,000 and now we've grown 5%. No, it's like, oh, last year we did 8 billion. Yeah. And, like, and we're trying to do 10 billion next year. Like, but Yeah, the it's just, also... they're in a very weird, weird spot right now. Like, I don't know what direction they're going in. The, the collections look confused. Mm. The looks, the the clothes are confused. Mm. It's almost like, you know, when a brand just looks in disarray, the collection also yeah, looks you can in disarray. Tell, you can tell. And it I guess looks like they don't also, know where they're going. What also puts them in a weird place is that Gucci traditionally up until now under um, Michele has been like very uh, maximalist, very vibrant, mm. very ostentatious. And now when you have trends like quiet luxury and you have... Uh, you, it puts a brand like that in a place where they're like, oh, what do we do? Do we follow the trend? Do we just try and stick to our guns? Right. We're already lost already. Like, it all, it just adds to the mix, you know what I mean? Whereas when you take a brand like Prada um, or like, even even like, um, what's it called again? Stuff like The Row, where like, now that these things are in trend, okay, let's just keep doing what we're doing. We're up. Right. But for a brand that was literally doing the, the complete opposite and they've just lost their creative director, 
it's kind of like, oh, what do we do now? Mm-hmm. That's what I think, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. Um, LA, I'll see. So the problem is also that Gucci is a big machine of caring. They're too dependent on the creative director, though. Yeah, that's true. It is. I'm trying to think what makes the most money at caring? Balenciaga, surely. I don't know. Um, it, I probably, it probably actually no, because Gucci is big, man. I don't know. It's probably between Balenciaga and Gucci. Um, but those two brands are both in disarray. Like literally, their two cash cows are in disarray. Do you think? Do you think Balenciaga is in disarray? In terms of like, I feel like there's still a stigma around Balenciaga and like buying oh, cool. it. I feel like a lot of people are still buying it, but I feel like there will be a big customer base. I mean, financially, did they even take a hit? Mm, Well, it depends what you mean by a hit, because these companies operate in billions. Mm. So for them, instead of making 10 billion profit, if they make five to them, that's a hit. But like, to me, it's like, yeah, but still profit. So I I remember, well, I I need to look into it. I feel like they didn't lose that much money. Okay, Gucci and YSL, top sellers. Yeah, YSL is like, in fact... YSL, there's a type of YSL customer, like a rich woman that only buys YSL and only wears that. I know a lot of those type of people. I know a lot of them that live in LA. I know a lot of them that live in New York. That customer is not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, but yeah, Balenciaga, I just feel like there's just a bit of a stigma in terms of like buying it because of what happened. Mm. No, I think there's definitely a stigma, but I just, I remember around the time that, it was the, during the full thick of it. Stuff yeah. was still selling out. So I was like, oh, clearly, like, the people, some people just don't care. And, like, yeah. they're, like, they're going to buy the stuff. So I was always under the impression that, like, it didn't hurt them financially yeah. um, that much. But maybe I'm wrong. He said Demna's Balenci- Balenci is over low-key. Yeah, I think my issue with Demna is, like, because I'm, I'm a big fan of Demna. I like his ideas. I like the way he thinks. I just think that, He's had a bad run since the Balenciaga thing. I think he's just not. He needs, like, some PR person. Because, like, he's just been going in circles. Like, I remember there was one show note where he said that, oh, we're moving away from kind of, like, meme culture. And oh, yeah, yeah. Culture. And I'm like, Demna, you made that. That is you. Like, he said, no, it was it was more nuanced than that. But the like, way, no, but the way he it framed like, I joined it, fashion and I was never interested in celebrities. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But somehow and I was it like, found its way at Balenciaga, and I was like, huh? I was like, <laughs> you're the creative director. What what do you mean by that? So it's just a lack of accountability and actually just saying that you were responsible for doing this and going around in circles. Just put your hands up and say, you know, we made a mistake. Yes, I made this, like, I'm responsible for, like, kind of memeing fashion. I want to move away from it. Cool, we'll move on. Don't kind of try to distance yourself from something you created. Like, it just seems a bit disingenuous. A bit weird. So do you think... So I, do, I don't know. I haven't been I haven't been a fan of what he's been saying recently. I just think he should leave that to PR. I feel like he should stop making statements. But, do you um, think but I'm a huge fan of his house? work, though. Sorry? Do you think he should stay at the house and just change his direction? Like, what would you want? I just think it it's it needs a different designer. I think um, not like I've had enough because I kind of I like them as ideas. It's not that. It's I think, just that I, just I think, think it's easy to, and I say this lightly, but I think it's easy to let the um, s- the scandal kind of cloud what you remember of Balenciaga in the sense of, mm. like, just before that scandal, they were up, bro. No one was... Yeah, but I was, I was already saying that a lot of what he was doing was getting monotonous. Like, in terms of, like, I could break... Let me break down a Demna Vesalia Balenciaga show. So, close to the end, there are going to be, like, some sportswear looks. Yeah? At the start, you're going to get a lot of black looks. You're going to get very flowy silhouettes that are always inspired by kind of what he was doing at Vetmore, which was like these flowy silhouettes inspired by like Orthodox Christian priests, which obviously like Georgia is a very Orthodox Christian country. Um, like it was just the same references. Know, like um, in terms of especially commercial at the, though, at the end, like the last it. three looks are going to be like, a, remember before he did Couture um, collections at Balenciaga, he would always yeah, yeah. leave those like, last three looks that were couture level looks mm, like mm. i could literally break down like every single balenciaga it got to a point where every single balenciaga collection 
I was literally like, yep, 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 yep. Here come the Orthodox Christian silhouettes. Okay, cool. Okay, now we've got the sportswear. <laughs> no, but I feel okay, like cool. that's, now we've... For, that's for someone like you <laughs> or I who's like literally watching everything like a hawk. For like, from a commercial perspective, bro, I've never seen Balenciaga so up. Like, before yeah, this game, commercially, oh, they were on top. Was, they, were, everything, they were. Everything was Balenciaga. Everyone was bang Balenciaga. It was all over my Instagram feed. Don't forget there was the whole um, yay... Kim Kardashian situation where Balenciaga seemed to be fueling all of their looks and everything they yeah. did. I know they were really up. So obviously the scandal meant that they had to take a step back, but I'm surprised that they've chosen to now 180 the direction they're going in from like a design perspective, it feels like, because it was doing very well, to my knowledge anyway. Mm. But it's interesting because it's, I want to see how caring kind of get outside of this whole mm. thing because yeah like Gucci is a kind of in disarray you're kind of relying on that Balenciaga people don't really know mm. like yeah it's just kind of weird YSL is definitely YSL th those customers are not going anywhere what's weird um, is I don't me personally I don't know any Saint Laurent customers but I know really I, like I know I, like I, don't, I don't know any in the I UK don't I don't know yeah, any in the UK, UK yeah, but I the people know. I know that are Americans that are doing quite well. Um, and like the women I know that wear YSL, like a lot of them are lawyers, like really um, highly paid lawyers. And so that's what they wear to work. Like mm -hmm. like YSL as like a uniform. Interesting. Um, so they wear YSL suits. And you know, because even if you think of like back into history, like Yves Saint Laurent himself, like his philosophy of like empowering women with power shoulders and tailoring. Mm. So a lot of women that are powerful people in business kind of like YSL as an idea in general. And they like wearing that kind of tailoring that empowers women. It's the kind of tailoring that is very like, like, you know, like powerful, like broad yeah, yeah. shoulders, sleeves are structured. So that I feel like those customers aren't going anywhere because they buy the exact same stuff every season and they spend a lot of money on YSL. Yeah, I don't know. Caring, caring's a weird one right now, for sure. Yeah, yeah people buy YSL, buy YSL, like real fashion, not much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're buying the actual suits. They're not buying like t shirts that say Isan or. Yeah, <laughs> this, this KK person is literally talking about the era I was talking about. They said Asian Instagram full outfit Balenciaga professional fit pics in brutalist background. <laughs> Bro, I remember when it was like this. It wasn't even that long ago. It really wasn't even that long ago. <laughs> That's, That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, for me, the shoes are a big part of the power of the YSL suits held during the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's interesting, but yeah, I guess that's the whole shebang with caring and kind of like what's going on with the Gucci.